Minasan, Karina Sai. Today we have yet another person I consider to be an all time great, but I also feel she is somewhat underrated as I usually don't see people praising her in the same ways as other legends in her generation. That person being Yuka Iguchi, born July 11th, 1988, in good old Tokyo. Currently with Office Osawa Agency, while her music is published under Karokawa Corporation. Now, I couldn't find much of an origin story, so I'll be skipping over that, but Yuka here is one of those seiyu with a huge resume, so I won't be going over each of the characters' names, just naming the shows, unless I deem it as one of her important ones. Though I'll probably just toss in a few random ones as well. If you're interested in the character, you can easily look up the show and find it. And one last thing, she's been showing off her body a lot recently, so I decided I should include a bunch of those photos here. Hope you enjoy. Let's get into that career. Her voice acting career technically began in 2002 after she passed an audition held by Broccoli to find voice actresses for the unit GGF, who would voice mascot characters for the company's chain of hobby shops known as Gamers. Yuka voiced the character Sapphire and later Peridot, but in 2003 she had her first anime role, and it was a named character, Akari Usada in Digikata and Yo. Then her and Saori Goto formed the unit known as Aerith. Smelt a little differently, but hey, shoutouts to Final Fantasy VII. This unit was also part of the GGF project and was active until 2005. That same year of 2005, she had another supporting role in a series called Canvas 2 Rainbow Colored Sketch. Then in 2006, she had her debut single, White Map. However, this would be the only track for a very long time as she transferred agencies to Office Osawa later that year. Then she had three smaller roles in Tokimeki Memorial, Gift Eternal Rainbow, and Ghost Hunt. In 2007, her career starts to go off as she will average 5 to 7 new roles for the next few years. I will mention her roles in Bakugan Battle Brawlers, Shadows to My Childhood, but also Koharu Biori in Kenko Zenrake. Then leads in Bokuro no and actually voicing Haruka Amami in Idolmaster. But in the weird mecha spinoff that has nothing to do with the main show and has none of the original cast. In 2008, she had a supporting role in Familiar of Zero, great show, but also in the Sixth Garden of Sinners movie. Then leads in Common No Made Guy, True Tier, and her first really big role voicing the very lovable and annoying Index in a certain magical Index. 2009, she's got some good stuff, but first making some cameos of Index in a certain scientific railgun, which is in the same universe as Magical Index, but also Shakugan no Shana, which is sometimes known as a predecessor to the Index series, even though in reality they have no relation at all. Yuka also had a role in Shangri-La, and she voiced Sherry in Fairy Tale. But then she's also got another very popular role of hers, Tsukihi Aragi in the Monogatari series, debuting in Bake Monogatari. In 2010, her career fully takes off, now averaging 10 new roles every year for basically the whole decade. However, I'd say most are pretty unknown. But let's start off with some trash ecchi shows, like Sekirei Peer Engagement and Demon King Dai Mao, but also Maui Neko and Jewel Pet Twinkle. Then a lead in a 4 episode OVA titled Atama Yura. As for 2011, Yuka had roles in Dream Eater Mary, Sket Dance, and Haganai. Then leads in Chibi Devil, Mayo Chiki, and voicing Maho in Roku Boo. Joining the Seiyu unit of the same name with the other four leads, who are also all very well regarded Seiyu, a truly stacked unit, having two albums and two singles tied to the show. Next is 2012. Remember when we were all supposed to die that year? Good thing that didn't happen. Yuka had supporting roles in Sankarea, Madaka Box, Waiting in the Summer, To Love Rue Darkness, and voicing Miku in Symphogear. She had leads in Hayate Combat Butler, and as Mako in Girls in Panzer, which I highly recommend if you haven't seen it already. This year, she also got her second fairy tale role as Shelia Blendy, the younger cousin of her first character. Then there was a new season of Monogatari, Nisei Monogatari in particular. I usually wouldn't mention second seasons, but in this case, Higuchi sang the third opening theme, Platinum Disco, a very beloved song with an iconic dance. But she also got her first award for Best Personality at the Six Seiyu Awards. Ah yes, the personality. On a serious note though, she is actually very funny and quirky, so I'd say this is well deserved. And I guess she actually got this award before her big booba was revealed, so maybe my joke doesn't actually work here. Actually, now that I think about it, this year she had her first photo book, Lei Shushu. A lot of the poses she did in this book mirror the drawings of her character Index. Damn, that was actually a really big year for her, and 2013 is another big year. Her re-debut into the music industry, 7 years after that first track, so I will restart the count here. So I will not be including the 2006 song when talking about her singles. This new first single being titled Shining Star Love Letter. This being the image song for the Magical Index movie. 
Sticking with this though, she had her second single, Grow Slowly. The ending for Scientific Railgun Season 2, Miho Karasawa aka True writing the lyrics for the coupling track. Still in 2013 though was her third single, Rainbow Heart Rainbow Dream. Its coupling track, Strike My Soul, being the first ending for Strike the Blood having a role in the show as well. Also in another big time ecchi series, Sanran Kagura as a lead character. Then having roles in Devil Survivor 2's adaptation, Majestic Prince, The World God Only Knows, Goddess Arc, having two roles in this one actually, and another fairly big one, Aoi in Encouragement of Climb. Another big recommend from me. 2014, she had her first full album, Hafa Arai, writing lyrics for two of the tracks. Anime roles include Lord Marksman and the Vanities, No Game No Life, the comic artist and his assistants, and a lead in Sakura Trick. All the other stuff was like second seasons and whatnot. 2015, her newest track was Hey World, the opening for Don Machi, a song that didn't debut too particularly well, but over time has become a fan favorite. She had a role in this series as well. This same year was her fifth single, Little Charm Fang, the opening for the OVA of Strike the Blood. She had three different characters in Kantai Collection, this one here being a lead role, and then Valkyrie Drive Mermaid, Seraph of the End, and Chivalry of a Failed Knight. 2016, second full album, As You Like, but as a spelt with a Z rather than an S, writing the lyrics for the final track, Oyasumi Nasai. She had two more singles as well, Unchanged Strength, the second ending for Heavy Object, then Los Daraj, the opening for Los Daraj and Sighted We Cross, having a role in this one as well. Also roles in Keijo, Regalia 3 Sacred Stars, Fantasy Star Online 2 The Animation, and Flying Witch. Then another big role of Krush in ReZero. Also two more Kantai Collection roles. It's crazy how many talented ladies are in this series and they all voice at least like three or usually more different characters. 2017, first mini album Love. Low key looking like an Oremina say here. More on that lady in the fun facts. Mm. Yuka also wrote the lyrics for the first track, Kimi Toboku. Her eighth single was Reillusion, the opening for the Don Machi spin off, Sword Oratoria. Anime roles include two in Aho Girl, one in Aeromanga Sensei, and one in Kakegurari. In 2018, her newest single, Unlock, was the opening for the new season of Los Daraj We Cross. Half year later, 10th single, Kakume Zenya, the opening for season 3 of Magical Index. Obviously reprising her role in both of those shows and many more new seasons. But completely new stuff include Grand Blue, A Place Further Than the Universe, and voicing Cowgirl in Goblin Slayer. All three of those shows are worth watching by the way. 2019, back to Magical Index, Oda Ranai Uta was the second ending theme for season 3. Then back to Don Machi, Yuka's 12th single, Under the Same Sky, was the theme for the Don Machi movie. And 13th single, Hello to Dream, was the opening for season 2 of the same show. She then lent her voice to the shows How Clumsy You Are, Miss Ueno, Fairy Gone, and debuting into Kimono Friends with their second season. Then another big role, the lead character of mine, in Ascendance of a Bookworm. In 2020, she had her third and most recent album, Clearly. This album having the song over and over, the opening for the third season of Don Machi. Then honestly, not too much anime. In general, she really starts to slow down from here on out. In 2020, the only new roles she had were her debut into Fruits Basket and her debut into Food Wars. Also, a small Pokemon role in Poketoon, and then in Princess Connect Redive. 2021, a small role in short series Gundam Breaker Battle Log, and debuting into two beloved isekais, Velzard in The Slime Show, and Kishirika in Mushoku Tensai, her smallest year yet. So, moving on to 2022. Her first new single in like three years, this is because she joined a brand new label, her current one, Kadokawa Corp. Her former label was Warner Brothers Home Entertainment, by the way, totally forgot to mention that when she debuted. Now with Kadokawa, this new single is Ichiban Boshi's Sonority, the ending for Uncle from Another World. And then she had her 16th most recent single, Prologue, the opening for a bibliophile princess. As for new anime, well honestly just a role in Delicious Party Pretty Cure. The rest of her year was new seasons of her bigger shows, Don Machi, Bookworm, Strike the Blood, and Encouragement of Climb. However, this was also the year she debuted her two new friends that are very appealing. In 2023, she had her second and latest mini album, Kimi ga Kimi de Kimi nan Daio. That's a mouthful. Nailed it first try though. Anime is again more new seasons, Don Machi, Goblin Slayer, and Girls und Panzer. Only new roles were in My Life as Inukai san's dog and Isakai de Cheat Skill. To end off this year, she was on the cover of My Girl Magazine Volume 37. As for this year of 2024, no new music, but actually a lot of new anime compared to the last few years. Dangers in My Heart Season 2. Train to the End of the World, God's Game We Play, 
chilling in another world with my level 2 super cheat powers and Seiyu Radio. Currently she's in plus sized elf and a new season of Monogatari. Banger ending theme by the way. And in just a few weeks she'll have a new season of ReZero. Earlier this year she had her second photo book, really showing off the goods, this being titled More More More. Perfect title. She also had a photo shoot with Weekly Playboy magazine. Then just last week, a little bonus book to add to the first one from this year, being more, 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 another side. Looks like people really did want more. And they got it. She has had smaller roles and even unnamed characters in some shows, but for the most part, she actually has fairly relevant roles. I will mention some smaller stuff in Blast Rider, Boruto, Detective Conan, Doraemon, Knights of Sidonia, then Scientific Railgun and Shakugan no Shana, and these are characters that are not her index cameos. Music, aside from her main career, include openings of Haganai, Devi Doll, and Sakura Trick, then endings of Sakura Trick, Sonron Kagura, Valkyrie Drive, Mayo Chiki, The World God Only Knows, Plus Sized Elf, Digikarat, and Majestic Prince, all sang with other cast members. Then just the whole soundtracks for Roku Boo, Symphogear, Encouragement of Climb, and Grozoon Panzer. When it comes to her solo career, if you didn't notice, basically all of her music is tied to Danmachi and Magical Index. Literally like 70% of it. And I'll be honest here, since I've been doing this for a few years now and I always check the peak of each song's debut, her music doesn't really sell all that well. Well enough for it to keep going honestly, but compared to all the other Seiyu I've covered, Iguchi's numbers are some of the lowest, which really sucks. I like the music, from what I've heard at least, and I love watching her perform at the big festivals, which I will be going over in a bit. But first let's talk about video games tie-ins to anime she's in like Sun on Kagura, Magical Index, Fantasy Star, Contact Collection, Valkyrie Drive, Gundam Breaker, and Princess Connect. But also anime she's not in like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. She would have been perfect for Stone Ocean. But hey, whenever we get Steel Ball Run, maybe she'll have a role in it. She's also got the usual suspects, Chain Chronicle, Grand Blue Fantasy, Dragalia Lost, Magia Record, Arc Knights, Fate Grand Order, Another Eden, Blue Archive, Girls' Frontline, and Azir Lane. With that last one, she has her regular character, but back in 2022, she took on a second character, after Aikayano had her whole shrine incident. Yuka is also in a few regular mainstream games as well, like Goddess of Victory Nikkei, Counter-Strike Online 2, like seven different Atelier games, the recent Zenless Zone Zero, Mega Man 11 as Roll, which is pretty cool, and finally Crash Twin Sanity, being her debut game back in 04. Final career section, concerts and guest appearances. By herself, her first live was in 2015, named after her first album, and even doing some solo Roku Boo songs here. Her second live was a tour in 2016, named after her second album. Many years later, in 2023, her 10th anniversary since her re-debut, having a fan meet and a birthday live. Special appearances include being at Anime Japan in 2016, Lee Sandy in Taiwan for both 2018 and 2019, then the EJ My Girl Fest in 2022, and Nagano Any Era this year, like this weekend. I'd assume there's more, but these were the only ones that I could find. As for her franchise shows, being at Simpho Gear Lives in 2013 and 18, and Roku Boo had a big show at the Saitama Super Arena back in 2013. Exactly 10 years later in the same arena, she performed with them again, opening Any Sama's third day. She was also at Any Mello in 2015, 16, and 2021, being in a music video for the 2015 song. Shoutouts to the 2021 show though, singing Platinum Disco and being part of the epic final crossover, but also totally missing her cue to sing during the final song. Here's her apology for missing it by the way. As for the other big one, Annie Max, 2014, 16, and 17. Shoutouts to her singing the second One Piece opening with Garnadelia at this one. And then 2018 was her final time being there, for now. Lastly, she's been on both of the big Any Song cover shows, Crossing, singing Only My Railgun from Certain Scientific Railgun, originally by Fripside, and Any Song to Show, singing Love Destiny by Yui Horie, the opening for her Sister Princess. So that's it for the career, now let's move on to the fun facts, of which I don't have too many unfortunately, but I'll start off with the usuals. She is 157 centimeters or just under 5 foot 2, she's on both Twitter X and Instagram, as well as having a YouTube channel that hasn't been active in 4 years, but you can find most of her newer music videos here. Which leads me to the first not so fun fact, all of her music back with Warner Label seems to have been erased from streaming. 
Everything from 2022 onward is available, and also Platinum Disco, though it's only available from the Monogatari series artist. Her very first track from 06 is also available to hear as well. Then all of the music videos from those Warner label songs are only the short versions on her YouTube. So for the actual fun facts, she loves alpacas and dogs and even owns a dog named Sasuke. Iguchi is one of those seiyu who is absolutely weak to haunted houses and just horror in general. She's a big fan of the MCU, also loving food, and has a very nice friendship with Rina Hidaka, who I'm sure Yuka looks at as a little sister. And since I really don't have too many facts, let's throw in some random stuff. When Inori Minase was accused of saying bad things about her colleagues, the account was trash shocking Yuka about getting breast implants. To which Yuka replied with this statement here, saying people who laugh at others are people who are doing nothing with their own life. Also saying people should focus on themselves rather than the well-beings of others and spreading rumors. Well said, Onisan. And just so I don't end on a negative note, Yuka is exactly one day older than other well-respected, underappreciated seiyu, Risa Taneda. And for a final bonus super random fact, she works with Kana Hanazawa, like, a lot. I wonder if they actually have a good friendship, I don't really see them posting together outside of special events. Then again, Kana usually doesn't post anything unless it's business related. And with that we have reached the ending yet again, I'm going to keep the ending short just like the beginning. Yuka is great as I've said many times in the video, nice to see her so active this year. Hopefully the momentum keeps up and she gets more anime, good anime. And I hope she's at more big festivals as much as she used to be. So thank you so much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed and learned something new. Please join me in the next video, a fun little idea I've had to see which of your favorite seiyu you may be compatible with. I look forward to seeing you there.